Oh, we're here to explain about a reef, what we did for a shift in gears. So we today we hope to explain who we are and why you should trust us, or what we sought out to answer through this report and presentation, and what we recommend to help shift in gears improve your organization. So we have been immersed in marketing research and consumer behavior for the past two and a half months and have been able to apply what we've learned in the classroom to this report and presentation. Our research was done from a textbook, credible secondary sources, and primary research from a survey we wrote and distributed. Our research was focused on the outdoor recreation industry as a whole and how it applies to shifting gears. We sought out to identify strategies to increase shifting gears outreach to build a community awareness of shifting gears and to reach their target market effectively. When in, back in January, Shifting Gears came to our classroom for us to get an understanding about where we're at. And one of the most crucial questions we heard from the person who came to sp speak to us was asking if we should include, if they should explicitly say women exclusive on their website. And so our first recommendation is to provide more clarity on the website regarding that topic. We thought about putting it in the About Us section, not as a mission statement, so in case in the future you guys choose to include both genders, then it's easier to change than the mission statement, the About Us section. So in the About Us section, we recommend putting, changing a person to woman, and so it will read, or inclusive cycling and hiking programs focus on breaking down barriers that stand in the way between a woman and their aspirations. We believe this is really crucial for our organization because we don't want potential consumers to have expectations that they could join if they were a male participant, show up to the event and then find out later that, find out at the event that they could not participate due to their gender. And that would just seem very ex um, exclusive at the time. And so to avoid any confusion, just having it on the website within like the first thing people see will help with the confusion. And now to pass it off to the next recommendation, Peter. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about branding, uh, perceptions of Shifting Gears branding, and attracting beginners. So in terms of branding, the first part of Shifting Gears brand is that they're a nonprofit. This is a huge piece of their identity, and it's also a huge piece of the way that consumers view them. Um, because positive aff affect comes with being a nonprofit. They're not necessarily as interested in uh, you know, profits and consumers see that and they appreciate that it makes the organization as a whole maybe a little more sympathetic, or at least that's what consumers uh, perceive it to be. Um, next, we're gonna talk about this kind of three pillar uh, approach that I see in Shifting Gears branding from uh, social media and their website. So the first part is community, um, and much like the outdoor industry, Shifting Gears has a really strong community that's built on welcoming and uh, supporting people within the community. Um, and Shifting Gears community is, I think, even stronger than a lot, a lot of the other uh, outdoor recreation industries, simply because of the level of kind of supportiveness um, that they demonstrate for their members. Uh, the second thing is fun, and this is what Shifting Gears is all about, really. It's, it's about uh, going outside and really enjoying the outdoors, having a lot of fun, um, just kind of experiencing nature. And I wrote expectation defining up there because uh, Shifting Gears is not necessarily about fitting in uh, the way other people might want you to fit in. It's about having fun in whatever way makes you happy, uh, you know, especially if, if it breaks the mold a little bit. Um, and then finally, uh, expertise. Um, Shifting Gears is both a provider and a connector of expertise. So in terms of uh, them being a provider, you're looking at Shifting Gears uh, members, their staff, having a lot of expertise in the outdoors. And Shifting Gears really demonstrates this a lot um, by posting, you know, uh, small bios about their uh, about their staff, like Jenny Schmidt, who just did uh, the 2100 mile bike ride uh, along the US-Mexico border. And that in general just really helps consumers understand that Shifting Gears is knowledgeable and kind of a trusted um, teacher, if you will. And then Shifting Gears is also a connector between consumers and uh, other kind of organizations or people that Shifting Gears isn't necessarily a part of, but they are affiliated with. So examples of this is like REI and um, the cycling company um, that Shifting Gears parts, partners with. And what it does here is Shifting Gears becomes, in the consumer's mind, kind of a um, one a to-go place uh, where 
they can get really, really trusted information um, about shifting or about uh, whatever passions they have, like cycling. So perception, um, there's a few issues, but first of all, uh, generally perception and attitude about shifting gears is very positive. Um, looking at Facebook and Instagram, comments are always positive. Uh, I didn't see any negative comments or reviews uh, at all when I was looking. But one of the biggest problems is that respondents uh, to our survey were unaware of shifting gears. 95% of them had never heard of shifting gears. And it's really hard to kind of build a good perception or a good attitude about a brand that you've never heard of. Um, and then the other kind of issue that we see is community entry. Um, and what we mean by this is that it's just really hard to enter a new community, especially one that's as strong and as cohesive as shifting gears is. Um, and I think a really kind of good way to visualize this is the article by Audrey Anderson that Shifting Gears promoted on its Facebook uh, a while ago. Uh, and Audrey Anderson was a beginner who had never mountain biked before, went up to Galbraith with uh, Shifting Gears and had a really good time. And through the article, you can see her kind of worry and apprehension turn into joy and ex uh, exhilaration. Um, and this, what this shows is that Shifting Gears program and programming is not bad, it's, it's actually very good and it, it really works for the consumer. The issue is just getting the consumer to show up um, and feel like comfortable entering a new community. So some strategies for kind of breaking down that barrier and attracting beginners. Um, the first one would be through price and this is what Shifting Gears does really well right now. Um, a lot of the time there's a high entry cost for entering uh, outdoor activities like mountain biking because you have to you know, buy a bike um, and buy all the kind of equipment that goes along with it. Um, but Shifting Gears does a really good job of making those initial costs very low through rental or loan programs um, or offering scholarships uh, on their website. Um, so then the next thing would be the product. And again, according to Audra Anderson, it's a great program. Um, it really works for converting people who have never tried the sport before into people who love the sport. Um, but again, the problem is just getting people to sign up. So the first thing is to continue to promote uh, beginner stories like Audrey Anderson's article, uh, because this is super salient to beginners who are maybe researching places and ways to get outside. Um, and beginners' testimonials like this are, are super impactful to people making decisions. Um, the next thing would bring, be bringing the commitment principle into the mix. Um, the commitment principle basically states that people are more likely to do something if they've committed to it prior. Um, so the way you can do this is through offering signups, not just on uh, your kind of longer or bigger events, but even the just super casual beginner friendly ones, um, even if they don't have you know, a limit to the number of people that can show up. And this can be as simple as uh, you know, want, us to let, uh, want to let us know that you're coming, sign up on our Facebook or sign up on our, our website. Um, and then the last thing is bringing the authority principle into the mix. And the authority principle states that people are more likely to purchase from people that they perceive to be experienced or have authority in the subject. Um, so a very simple way to do this is next to any trip postings that you have, put a picture of the trip leader and a small bio about their experience in the outdoors, maybe what they like in the outdoors and other interests that they have, because that will increase the amount of authority that the consumer perceives them to have, as well as creating kind of a pre um, event bond between the consumer and uh, their trip leader to kind of ease any tension that they had um, by like not even knowing who their trip leader was. So two more strategies. First of all, promotions. 95% um, of our uh, survey respondents said that they would rather try something new with somebody that they knew. So uh, this could be as simple as bring your friend to the mountain day, um, getting people who are already involved in shifting gears to invite their friends to come up to the mountain um, and kind of expand their community. But it makes it a lot easier for beginners to kind of be a part of it and enter the community because they already kind of had that link. Um, and then looking at place, right now, uh, Shifting Gears is really visible in places that you'd expect to find uh, people who go outdoors all the time. So bike shops, um, outdoor stores, breweries, that kind of thing. And we think it would be really important to kind of increase the scope and variety of places that you can see shifting gears, looking at local businesses such as uh, bookstores or cafes or even like shoe stores, um, as well as public areas like uh, community centers or schools. And the whole point here is to create more exposure, uh, which brings in the rule of seven, which states that consumers need to see an advertisement about seven times or more um, before they're likely to go buy the product. So definitely 
making sure that consumers not only see your name once or twice, but see it everywhere. Um, and this can be as simple as a small flyer posted on a bulletin board um, that has uh, Shifting Gear's name, logo, and then maybe a small grab about wanting to get outdoors, uh, as well as somewhere that you can interact with them, whether that be Facebook or a website. Um, and then also, according to the Google Insights about people's searches that you gave us, uh, people don't find shifting gears on the internet by searching for things like biking in Bellingham or that kind of thing. They find it by specifically searching for shifting gears. Um, so uh, making sure that they actually know the name of shifting gears before they go search uh, would be really effective in kind of getting more customers because it's clear that people just don't find shifting gears by kind of searching generic terms uh, and then shifting gears popping up. So uh, we're also gonna talk a little bit about social media and applying the same principles here to them. Um, and for that, we'll pass it on to June. Okay, so now I'll be talking a little bit about social media. Currently, Shifting Gears is mainly using Facebook and Instagram, which is great because according to our survey, the majority of our respondents use Facebook and, and Instagram as their main ways for engaging with community events. So currently, Shifting Gears um, is posting content such as updates and countdowns of current events that they are doing um, in, in during the season. Um, but we will touch a little bit more about further content that you can create other than informational ones. First and foremost, we believe that Shifting Gears should first create a scheduling, a posting schedule um, in order to remain active on your followers' feeds. This is especially important because Instagram and Facebook do not post con does not post content and show content to followers in the order that um, companies post them. It's they have an algorithm, and that algorithm is basically whichever accounts that they interact to interact with the most. Those are the accounts that will show up first on the top of their feed. So if a user has is following roughly a thousand followers and shifting gears has not posted in a while. Shifting Gears next post would show up at the very bottom of their feed and this is obviously not very good because the likelihood of them seeing and engaging with that post at that point would be very unlikely. So the first thing is to create a, a posting schedule and really following that all, all year round, especially during your off seasons. We noticed that in the winter time, Shifting Gears does not post as frequently. In fact, I did not see very many at all in, winter, in um, December. And then you pick back up again during Wild Women's Week and the weeks prior to that in order to um, market and promote that. Um, so one way to really break up what you post, especially in the winter if you don't have a lot of events going on, is to post things like that you think your followers will be able to identify with and things that are really specific to your mission and your values as shifting gears. This would fall under the, the aspirational marketing effect because if your followers identify themselves with your values, then they will more likely want to share shifting gears and their um, shifting gears and their values with their friends as well. So if you post an inspirational quote that's alluding to empowering women and um, getting outdoors, then they will um, be more they will identify more with your company. Um, as well as similar to what Peter was saying about the authority persuasion, we also recommend posting little short bios about the leaders that will be um, guiding um, events um, for shifting gears. This way, that this way, people who are new to shifting gears and don't know who you are yet, they will be able to um, understand where you are coming from and your past experience, so they will feel more comfortable um, joining and 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 getting past that barrier of the unknown. So as far as engaging with followers, social media at this point is has become this very curated informational um, platform. However, we really don't wanna forget the social aspect of social media. And this really heavily involves engaging your followers. Um, we, real, we noticed that you have used the hashtag let's shift gears before, but while looking through those posts, we noticed that the hashtag is mainly used by the Shifting Gears account themselves and not so much the, the, the participants of Shifting Gears events. So we encourage you to 
tell your the people who participate in your events to use the hashtag let's shift gears in order to spread the word um, because if one follower reposts a photo with the hashtag let's shift gears then that's a couple hundred more people that are aware of the name shifting gears and that's really important with the mere exposure effect as well the more people that know your name the more they will prefer and be drawn to your company um, one of the mission we had is giving shout outs and recognition to those who are participating in your events and this will probably also encourage other people to also want to participate as well we have a little um, idea of hosting a little social media contest of where users would post a picture of them um, participating in the outdoors with the hashtag let's shift gears and they will be entered to win a contest and enter to, in a contest to win a small item maybe it's a sticker or a little item um, provided by a company that you partner with um, at the end of the week or month however long you choose to hold the contest and while they are posting these pictures of the hashtag let's shift gears of them being out in the outdoors um, you as shifting gears can then repost these posts on your instagram stories um, showing that you see them out there being um, being women in the outdoors really um, aligning with your values. And the reason why we suggest using Instagram stories as opposed to just reposting them onto your main feed is because Instagram stories do not follow the algorithm that your feed does. Instagram stories, they update as users update them. So the more you update them, the farther up they will be on your followers' um, um, story feed. So if you repost onto your stories, then it will also expand activity and content that your followers will see. And this is especially a good idea during your off seasons, like in the winter. So if you don't have as many things to post on your main feed, you can post little updates on your feed or little ins inspirational quotes or anything that really aligns with the values and missions of shifting gears. And as far as the hashtag and using your stories, um, we think it's really important to take the experiences that people are already getting from shifting gears um, and using that into, into exposure. So if, they, if someone who had a great experience during shifting gears, they use the hashtag let shift gears and they talk about how great of an experience they had, this is really churning what they, they gain and sharing it with the world and then you are really building your network that way and um, more and more people will hear the name Shifting Gears. And because it comes from um, a person and someone that uh, firsthand um, had the experience with your company and not from you guys yourself, then um, others will more likely be willing to follow in that as well. Um, ben will, not Ben, shoot, Jake will continue with um, how to turn experience into exposure. All right, and now I'm gonna be talking about a few uh, more long-term recommendations that we have for shifting gears, one in the form of merchandise. And we found that stickers are gonna be the best option for you guys in, for, in, the, uh, in terms for merchandise because uh, they're small, they're cost-effective, and they do a really good job of increasing brand awareness. Uh, when, when people use stickers, they either put it on their water bottle or on their car or wh wherever they do put it, it's gonna be in a place that they're gonna see a lot and due to the mere exposure effect, um, just by seeing something a lot, you become a lot more familiar with it and tend to enjoy it more. And due to this, they're going to uh, potentially look up shifting gears and find out more about who they are as a company. All right, and so our main, our main recommendation here is because we know that uh, shifting gears has used stickers in the past, but basically we want to expand the distribution here. So we want to expand to tabling events, um, using employee social circles to kind of spread stickers out that way, as well as other businesses, which is really key because you can use this to attract new customers in just by handing them out to businesses to distribute within their customers. That's going to uh, utilize kind of just like a whole new business's uh, customer base in order to potentially attract new customers for Shifting Gears and just be more exposed in general to uh, Shifting Gears' logo and brand. All right, and this can also be used to retain or recapture um, old customers by sending stickers as the form of a gift um, post an event. This can kind of either, uh, this will act as kind of just like a, a nice genuine gift that they're receiving from Shifting Gears. 
And um, when a person receives a gift, they have a natural tendency to want to reciprocate, uh, and they'll do so in the form of attending future Shifting Gears events, as well as it will enhance their uh, personal view of who Shifting Gears is as a company and their kind of brand ideals, and just knowing that they are, um, they are a good company that cares about their consumers. All right, and moving on um, to another long-term recommendation with relationships with other companies. Um, as Peter was saying earlier, he, we want to expand to different, uh, different markets, but we also want to continue to utilize the similar markets that still haven't been tapped into yet uh, locally. And so um, by just kind of increasing the conversation about shifting gears in local businesses, this will increase um, just the more, more conversation that started, customers will see this and they'll want to understand uh, pretty much like what this company is, that they're, the businesses that they're already customers to are uh, uh, clearly interested in. And it also, um, uh, it also just benefits both parties in this way. We know that in the past, Shifting Gears has uh, partnered with like Boundary Bay and a few other places, but um, uh, by doing, by basically partnering with a nonprofit, uh, the for-profit company is allowed to um, just show that they care about the causes that the nonprofit cares about, as well as just are supporting local businesses. Um, so this this looks really well on it looks really good for them, um, as well as allows them to kind of give back to local causes. And so a few potential businesses of interest that we were looking into is uh, one in particular, Backcountry Essentials. They provide outdoor recreation gear and they also um, sponsor events for educating people about safety and outdoor recreation in general. And um, a few of the outdoor, uh, some of the outdoor gear that they do provide is like for skiing, camping, hiking, and uh, backpacking trips. And so we had uh, a recommendation to for shifting gears once they partner with Backcountry Essentials to do a backpacking trip uh, in the winter and do it up to like Mount Baker and have Backcountry Essentials provide the necessary gear for them to do so. What we noticed through our research was that uh, during the winter time, the climate doesn't really allow for shifting gears to conduct their normal activities such as like biking and hiking. It just doesn't really work for them to do that during that season. So there's not as many events going on during that time. So by doing this, they can kind of increase the amount of uh, activities that they're having, the amount of events that they're uh, doing like year long, so it can be more consistent through that winter season where it's a little bit slower. And having Backcountry Essentials provide the gear um, necessary, they can get snowshoes, backpacks, and just winter clothes in order to prepare for the trip. Um, so yeah, this is that was one of our recommendations as well as uh, for a business of interest. And another business of interest is Bar 542, which is an outdoor recreation themed bar. Um, so just kind of by utilizing the same uh, customer, the similar customer base that are clearly interested in similar activities, um, shifting gears can potentially gain some new customers that haven't heard about them before, or um, yeah, have just yet to hear about shifting gears. All right, and I'm gonna pass it over to Ben. Commitment, consistency, and building a relationship with your customer is all part of customer loyalty program and rewards. Uh, customer loyalty rewards can provide a sense of relationship and along with getting, along with getting commitment from your customers because the longer the, the rewards you give, the more they'll learn to come back and that way you can build a better rapport and relationship with your customers, making them more committed to going to your events. One of the ways that you can do this is by having a season pass we like to call it the Superwoman Pass. Uh, the season pass is just like your ski or football season pass where a customer can pay up front for a certain amount of events or a certain long amount of time and they can get into those events uh, for free using the pass. Uh, this will also need to have a financial incentive to get more people to buy the pass, such as a small discount for each event they go to, uh, included in the season pass. Uh, with season passes, just like skiing football passes, uh, when people buy them, they are more likely to put more time into their schedule, to uh, more time into fitting them into their schedule so they can be more committed into going to those events. Another way that uh, customers 
can get uh, loyalty rewards is through a punch card system. With the punch card, let's say every five events, they go to the, the fifth event, they either get like a sticker, maybe the next time they buy a ticket, they get another one so they can, are encouraged to, uh, to bring a friend along with them. This can uh, create retention in customers and create consistency of them going because with each reward they get, um, the more they learn through uh, a objective learning uh, to keep coming back. The punch card also needs to have its limits. Noticing that shifting gears have multiple events per day, it might be wise to uh, reduce the limit to your card usage for only one time per day. This also makes the, the reward have a more perceived value because it's less frequently given out and thus more perceived value is given to the customer about the reward. Some of the stuff that backs this up is some of the psychology concepts that we learn in class. One of those concepts is relationship marketing. Basically just stating that if you have a better relationship with your customers, they're more likely to be more committed to your organization or company and making them more uh, committed to going to your events. The next, especially with the punch card system, is the habitual decision making. Once they learn that every single time they get a reward, they are given a, they're, they're given a reward, they will have a more incentive to come back and uh, making it more of a habit to come back to these events and get their physical exercise from shifting gears and not any other outdoor industry company. Uh, with habitual uh, with habitual decision making, they uh, have more cognizant consistency as well as it relieves them of cognizant stress uh, that can lead to them choosing other outdoor industries. The last uh, psychology thing we learned in class is the instrumental learning. Uh, with each reward, it's just like an in instrumental learning. They are learned to uh, be more committed to the event. As well, as well as uh, being more loyal and retention to the event. Uh, with more conclusion, I'll go to Ashley. We want to thank you all for watching this presentation, and we hope that you can like throughout our presentation. You can see um, different recommendations that I can make today or not tomorrow, and then other recommendations that might take longer time to really curate and get a good idea about and a good grounding in it. So thank you for watching. Yeah. Alright, stop it. Stop it quick. Alright, we'll Is that okay? I think everything was okay except for <laughs>